Thanks for being with us. Welcome to episode number 8 of our series, Ducted Air Conditioning. Today we present the Air Handling Unit. What is the Air Handling Unit? The UMA Air Handling Unit, or also called UTA Air Treatment Unit. It is the fundamental device in the treatment of air, in air conditioning installations, in terms of the correct flow rates of ventilation, cleanliness, temperature and humidity. The heat or cold, as the case may be, comes from external sources, boiler or refrigeration machines, through water or steam pipes. There may, however, be an own contribution of heat through electrical support resistors incorporated in some equipment. Where do we find the air handling units? Air handling units are found in buildings, medium and large premises. They are usually located in the basement, on the roof or on the floors of the building. It is also very common to find multiple UMAs around the building. Some buildings, particularly older skyscrapers, will have only one large AMU, usually on the roof. But this design is not as common in new buildings anymore, because it is so inefficient. Now it is more common to have several smaller UMAs, for a supply of different zones, with better control and conditioning of higher quality spaces. What is the purpose of an air handling unit? 1. Taking fresh air in from outside, and then cleaning, heating or cooling it, may be humidifying or dehumidifying. 2. Force air through ductwork around designated areas within a building. 3. In addition, most of the units will have an additional duct, to then take this used dirty air out of the premises, and take it back to the UMA, where a fan takes it back to the atmosphere. 4. Some of this return air can be recycled back into the fresh air supply to save energy. What are the characteristics of a typical air handling unit? We will list them below. 1. In a basic model we have two ducts, one for supply and one for return air. 2. The UMA has a mesh to prevent entry of objects. 3. At the supply and return input we have some dampers. 4. The dampers are multiple sheets of metal that can rotate. They can be closed to prevent air from entering or leaving the AHU. 5. Dampers can be fully open to allow air in or out completely. 6. Dampers can also vary their position somewhere in between to restrict the amount of air that can enter or exit. 7. You can have a motorized controller that changes the position of the dampers. 8. After the dampers, you have some filters. These are there to try to catch all the dirt and dust. Without these filters, dust will accumulate inside the ductwork and within the mechanical equipment. It will also enter the building and be breathed in by the occupants. 9. In each of the filter banks, we will have a pressure sensor. 10. The pressure sensor will measure how dirty the filters are and can alert attendants when it's time to replace them. 11. As the filters collect dirt, the amount of air that can flow through them is restricted, causing a pressure drop. 12. Normally we will have some panel filters, or pre-filters to catch the larger dust particles. 13. We will also have some bag filters to catch the smaller dust particles. 14. The next thing we find are the cooling and heating exchangers, to reach the right temperatures. 15. The supply air temperature is measured as it leaves the AHU, and compared to the set point. 16. Inside heat exchangers, there is a hot or cold fluid, usually water, or perhaps steam. 17. Trifugal fans are very common in old and existing AHUs, but speed-controlled fans are now being installed for greater energy efficiency. 18. On the other side of the fan, we will also have a pressure sensor. This will detect if the fan is running. 19. If the fan is running it will create a pressure difference, and this can be used to detect equipment failure. 20. We also likely have a duct pressure sensor, shortly after the fan. This will read the static pressure and in some sums the fan speed is controlled as a result of the pressure in the duct. 21. Then we have the ducts that send the air around the building to designated areas. 22. We will also have some ducting for the return, which is bringing all the used air out of the building back into a separate part of the flue. 23. If you are in a cold part of the world, where the air temperature reaches or close to freezing, you have a preheater on the fresh air intake. It is usually an electric heater. 24. When the outside air is around 5 degrees Celsius, the heater will turn on and heat the air to protect the components inside from frost. Otherwise, this could freeze the heating and cooling exchangers inside. 25. Some sums, it has a duct placed between the exhaust and the fresh air intake. 26. This duct allows part of the exhaust air to be recirculated back to the fresh air intake to compensate for the heating or cooling demand. 
27. An additional damper is located inside the connecting duct, to control the amount of air that can be recirculated. 28. The exhaust air has a percentage of COTWO, so some COTWO sensors are needed to monitor its concentration. If the COTWO level is too high, the air cannot be reused. 29. In situations where the air cannot be reused, the mixing damper will close and all return air will be rejected from the building. 30. In the recirculation mode of the UMA, it is thought that most of the return air returns to the premises. 31. However, in recirculation mode, the main air inlet and outlet dampers to the outside do not close completely, because we will still need a minimum amount of fresh air to enter the building. 32. Some buildings require 100% fresh air, so the recirculation strategy cannot be used everywhere. Thanks for being with us. Remember to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode of the series. Air Conditioning Products.